I always like starting with this kind of cartoon, right? Um, and what it does is it contextualizes where regulators are used in their different types. So there's two main types of regulators. One is pressure reducing and the other is back pressure. So pressure reducing regulators do just what their name implies, right? They take a high pressure uh, source, whether it's a gas or a liquid, they take a high pressure source, they reduce that pressure down to something that's usable for a process. Um, and that process can be a whole host of things, right? It could be a lab test bench, it could be a continuous chemical process, it could be, you know, um, tank filling, whatever it is, right? It can be anything. And then on the other side there, uh, you have back pressure regulators. And so where pressure reducing regulators drop pressure and they want to control the outlet or what's downstream of the regulator, kind of pressure reducing regulators look forward, back pressure regulators, as the name implies, they look behind them. So back pressure regulators are controlling the upstream pressure and they're keeping that pressure within a specified limit. Right, so you can use um, back pressure regulators to um, relieve excess pressure, you know, things like that. Um, almost think of them as a, a very sensitive um, relief valve, right? Obviously, they don't slam open and dump a bunch of pressure, but they operate in a similar way. Now, most regulators used in the industry are the pressure reducing type. Yeah, we see about 75% pressure reducing to 25% back pressure. So most of our discussions today are going to be around the pressure reducing type of regulators because those are most common. A lot of the concepts we talk about are applicable to back pressure regulators. And if you do have back pressure regulator questions, don't hesitate to ask. 